Good evening. Welcome to Online Church again. I am so glad that you are watching. I miss you. Um, it's getting tough, but I believe that God is working wherever you are, wherever you sit, wherever you watch. I believe God is going just to work and I believe the Holy Spirit is going to learn us something, in, inspire us and um, motivate us. Thank you for for watching. I do pray for you every morning during the day. I'm still praying for you and I pray that um, that this lockdown will bring you closer to God and um, closer to Him and closer to the Holy Spirit. Have you ever had something powerful but you don't know how it works? Because in this lockdown time, one of my cell groups said, listen here, let's start with this Zoom thing. You know, this is a new trend. Let's Zoom and then we can just Zoom our cell group meetings and we can Zoom whatever we want. And I said, okay, cool idea. Let's start Zooming. But my Zoom doesn't work. So the one oak said, okay, listen here, here's the link. Just go download it and then you can Zoom. But my Zoom doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I'm sitting there yelling at my laptop in the name of Jesus just work for me please 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 and just open the zoom app and help me in the name of Jesus and I'm yelling at my laptop because usually yelling at technology it usually works you know my, my laptop usually respond well when I yell at it in the name of Jesus but this time my laptop doesn't work it doesn't want to respond to any thing so i'm i am livid so i decide you know what laptop this is your final chance i go to the i went to the kitchen got some oil i said listen your laptop now i'm going to anoint you in the name of jesus and then afterwards i'm going to bang you against the wall and then i'm gonna then i'm gonna organize a funeral for laptops and you will be dead because you're not working and i want my zoom app to work alicia came in calm and said, Eric, the Wi-Fi isn't even on. So she went, click a button, open the Zoom app, boop, and Zoom are working and everything is good. You see, it is good to have something powerful. And it is even better when you know how to use it. And we as Christians, we have something powerful. We have something powerful and it is called praise, 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 praise. It's called praise. And when I, when, I, when I say the word praise, it doesn't always mean it's the first song in church where we clap and we stand and we sing. But you know, when I say the word praise, it's, it's a state of mind. When I say the word praise, it's a way of life. It is mentioning the name of Jesus and praising Him for who He is. For what he done. And then the moment we're just mentioning. And the moment we're just praying or praising him. It's so powerful. It can break every chain. It is so powerful. It can make every demon start running in hell. It is so powerful. It can change anybody's life. It's so powerful that even it, be it can become a problem. To your problem. I don't know what your problem is. Tonight. Maybe you've got a problem, but I know that your praise can make an impact on that problem. Praise is more than just going to church. Praise is more than just some happy Christian adjectives. You see, praise is where you can face down anything and say, Jesus, I don't know what's happening right now, but I will praise you. Jesus, I don't know what's, what, what holds the future, but Jesus, I will praise you because you are the one who holds the future in your hand. Jesus, I'll praise you. 
I'll praise you. And then your problem, then it becomes a problem for your problem. I've read a story and I'm going to read it to you. In, in Acts 16, verse 25, Paul and Silas, they in jail. Listen to this. About midnight. About midnight. Why is it so important to know exactly the time? About midnight. You see, because sometimes at midnight, when the dark, when the, when the, when the night is at its darkest, your praise should be at its loudest. When the dark is at its, when the night is at its darkest, your praise should be at its loudest. That's why about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now I, I start googling this and I start went to all the all the scholars and all the commentaries. So I found out Paul and Silas were singing songs from the same songs as Handelinger Church. Yes, Amen. They were singing handling songs in jail about midnight and the other prisoners were listening to them. Again, why is it important to know that, that prisoners were listening to them? You see, because sometimes our world needs to hear what you're shouting when things aren't going good. Amen. Things, people want to hear what our, what our Christians are shouting when things aren't going good because they know what our Christians are shouting when we win. They know what our Christians are shouting when things are good. And maybe, maybe our prisoners are listening the same time when we're in jail. Maybe our other people, other prisoners are, are, are listening to us the same time we are in a problem. We are facing trials. We are facing tribulations. We are facing things. And then they want to hear, what are your Christians shouting? What are, you, what are you praising Jesus for? What are you shouting? Because I know you are shouting. What are you shouting when things are going good? But what do you shout when things are going bad? What do you shout when things are going tough in this lockdown time? What do you shout when you see death cases are rising? When you, what do you shout when you see cases and, 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 and people are getting more affected? What are you shouting when things are going bad? Other prisoners are listening. Verse 26 Say suddenly there was a violent earthquake which shook the prisoner to his foundation, and at once all the doors of all the doors opened and the chains fell off that prisoners. You see, the moment Paulus and Silas praising Jesus, the other prisoners were listening. They were participating. They were doing something. You know, there's, there's something powerful when a family starts praising Jesus together. There's something powerful when, when a church comes together and praising Jesus Christ. There's something so powerful, it can even break the chains of someone else's life who doesn't even want to be free. There's power in praising together. There's power in praising as a husband, as a marriage together. There's power in praising as a family together. Verse 27 7 says, The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison door open, he thought that the prisoners had escaped. So he pulled out his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul shouted at the top of his voice, Don't arm yourself. We are all here. You see, when you start praising Jesus, it can even give you a laugh for your enemy again. When you start praising Jesus, the one who caused you to be in jail, when you praise, you can even give a laugh. You can even give, you can, he can even give you a laugh for your enemy again. When you praise Him for how graceful He are, how wonderful He are, and then immediately you don't want to hold back the grace. He's been giving to you. So you just want to give out all the grace. Doesn't matter. Even if it's your enemy. I just want to give out all this grace. The moment you start praising Jesus. Verse 29. Verse 29 says. And the jailer called the light. Rushed in. Fell trembling at the feet of Paul. Silas. And when he let them out and asked. Sir. What must I do. To be saved. No altar call. There was no sign up of new member. There was no conference. There was no mentioning of sin. For this God, he saw two people praising God, worshipping, praying for the king of the kings. And for him, for the God, that was more than enough. He fell on his feet and said, I want to give my life to Jesus. You see, 
You see, sometimes we have, sometimes our praise have to overcome our feelings. Our praise. Have to over, has to overcome our feelings. Psalm 34 says, I will praise God all the time. I will praise God all the time. I will praise God all the time. Yeah, Eric, you know, but I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling going to church this morning. I don't feel going to church this evening. You know, I don't feel like it today. I don't feel like doing what God wants me to do. I don't feel like singing a new song for you. I don't feel like sitting next to that person. I don't feel like sending an SMS to someone. I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel, even in this lockdown time, I don't feel spending time with Jesus. I don't feel it. My answer, will you, my answer to you will be, well, Jesus felt like going for the cross, like going to the cross for you. He felt it. Yeah, but I'm not feeling it. Well, he felt it for you. That's why Psalm 34 says, I will praise Jesus all the time. You see, there comes a day, at the end of the day, your praise has to overcome your feeling. Even in this lockdown, even in this time of trouble, even in this time, you have to say, Jesus, I will praise you. Even when even cases are rising, how you will still, you still have to make, you'll still have to praise Jesus for who you are. Jesus, I'll praise you. I don't know what's going to happen with my business in this time. But Jesus, I will praise you. You see, in, in many churches, we have a way that when we praise and worship, we lift up our hands and praise and worship Jesus. And someone explained it to me so good. And I just want to, I want to explain the same to you. You see, when someone puts a gun at the back, at, points a gun in your back, what do you first you do? You lift up your hands. You surrender. You said, okay, okay, okay. You surrender, you lift up your hands. You see, sometimes we just have to put up our hands. Sometimes, sometimes doesn't even know when, how, why. We just have to put up our hands and remind our souls. Souls, listen, you, you won't dictate my life. Even if I have to lift my hands, I will do it. But you won't dictate me. I will surrender my life. I will praise Jesus no matter what. You see, it's not about a method. It's not about a method. It's about a heart issue. It's about, it's about a heart issue. Jesus, I don't know about the future. But here I am. I'll surrender my life. For. Jesus, I don't, know about my, I don't know about my finances. I don't know. But Jesus, I'll surrender my life to you. I'll praise you. Jesus, I don't know anything about my health. But Jesus, I will praise you. I will surrender my life. Father, I do not know what's going to happen to my business in this lockdown time. But Father, I will still praise you. I don't know what's going to happen to the world. And what's going to happen to my country. But Father, I surrender. I will praise you. I will praise you. You see, Jesus sent His only Son. God sent His only, one and only Son. So that we can praise Him all the time. If there's anybody in this life that should have the right to get time from time to time praise, it has to be Jesus. Because without Him, we've got nothing. He is worthy of our praise. So the next time when you sing a song, when you lift up your hands, when you praise Jesus, it's not about the song. It's more than, it's, it's our anthem. It's our confession. Jesus, I will praise you all the time. I want to give you two reasons why we, why we should praise God that's, that's, that's not dead but alive. Two reasons why we should praise God that's alive. Number one is we praise God because He's already done more than you think He has. You see, God is faithful. God is a way maker. God is a promise keeper. God is a, God is a, is a healer. man. God is good. And he's already done more than you think he has. So you can start praising him now. God has already done more on your behalf than you've ever seen in your life. Do you really think that Paul and Silas knew that God would send an earthquake to help them out of jail? No. But they knew that God was faithful. They knew that God will make a way. They knew it. And that's why they just said, because I will praise Him. Because we've already seen God in the power and His work. And that's why I will praise Him. 
So when Paul and Silas ended up in jail, they knew. They knew exactly. You know what? God failed never. God never failed anybody and he won't plan failing someone now. So please don't panic. Don't start running to horoscope. Don't start running to reading the stars. Don't start running to anyone that's called him a prophet and prophesying over your life or prophesying over the situation. Let's start praising Jesus. Saying, Jesus, I surrender my life. I'm praising you. So in this time, if you find yourself overwhelmed, remember the faithfulness of God. Remember the goodness of God. Remember how amazing he has been. So stop. <sighs> Breathe in this time. God is already preparing a way for you in the future. You see, God is already fighting your battles. And then number two. We will praise God because he's going to do more than you think. He's going to do. You see, some of you are sitting there saying, I don't know how I'm going to survive. I don't know how my business is going to survive. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to survive. I want to I wanna just, I want to tell you good news this evening. You're, you're not just going to survive, but God is going to use you. God is going to use your business. God is going to use, you, use your story then more than you can ever dream. I want to read you a scripture in Ephesians, Ephesians 3. I want to just, oh, now I have to find it again. Ephesians 3, oh, I can't find it. Ephesians 3 verse 20, so God is able to do more and abundantly what you can ever be asked or dream of because God is good. God is powerful. You can read it, Ephesians 3 verse 20. You see, Paul and Silas, I believe they, they, they walked out of prison and just said, wow, shaking the heads. Can you believe that God did this? They think that there was only one song. They think that, that what, they only prayed one prayer. They only sing one song. They only did one thing. But you know, the jailer got saved. People were meeting Jesus. Can I, I want to I give you some math class. Can I give you some math class? I wasn't good at maths, but I believe that I can give you some math class. And this is not normal maths. This is Jesus Christ math. Listen to this. Your seed, your one seed, your one prayer. Your one praise, your one thanksgiving, your one Bible verse, your one, your one SMS, your one hug, your one smile, plus God equals deliverance, plus God equals healing, plus God equals jailer got saved, plus God will equals people meeting Jesus, plus God will equals yokes have been, have been broken. One seed plus God equals the impossibility. Equals the, equals the impossible things that can be done. You see, I've learned that sometimes it's just a drop of a seed. And God take that seed and start to grow it. I, I learned in, in this time, it's just, a, it's just a drop. It's just one prayer, one praise, one thanksgiving, one word, one Bible verse, one something. Just, just, just a small little seed. And God take that seed. And then he starts growing it and growing it and growing it. Maybe tonight. Maybe tonight. Maybe you have to go down on your knees and just start praising God and say, God, thank you for what we already know. What do we know? We know God is faithful. We know he's a way maker. We know God died for us. We know the Holy Spirit is empowering our life. We know that God is a promise keeper. That seed, that one praise seed can produce way more than you can ever think. I don't know what the future holds. I really do not know what the future holds. But I do know there's more. I do know there's more. So what should we do? Lift up our hands and praise Jesus all the time. No matter what
Let's just pray together. Father, oh, thank you that you are good. Thank you that you are faithful. Thank you that you, is, you are a way maker, Father. You are a promise keeper, Father. You, you, you are good, Father. You're good to us. Father, I just want to pray. Father, change our mourning into joy. Change, change our, our worry, Father, into a praise, Father. So that we can start praising you. Even in this time. Even in this, in this, in this time of trial, Father. Even in this time of tribulation. Even in this time of, of things not going well, Father. That we can be as Christians. That we can shout a praise, Father. And say, I will praise Jesus. Even in this time. I will praise you, Father. And no matter what, I will praise you. Even in bad times. Jesus, thank you that you can just, thank you that you love us. Thank you, Father, that we already know that you died for us. Father, thank you that we know that you sent the Holy Spirit just to empower us, change us. We love you, Jesus. I pray for everyone listening to this. Father, I pray wherever they are, Father, that the Holy Spirit will just come and touch them wherever they are. Father, that the Holy Spirit will come and just, just give, a, give a new, new fire in them, Father, so that they just love you, praise you. Thank you, Jesus. That even in the darkest hour, our shout, our praise will be the loudest for you. Because we believe in you. We believe in your work. We believe what you say for you. Thank you, Jesus. Help us. Keep us safe. Help motivate us for you. Even in the start. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I will see you next week again. Have a nice week. Stay safe. And um, have, may you have an encounter with Jesus this week. I believe. Um, I really believe that God wants, to, wants, wants an encounter with so many people. And, um, I believe that make time. Spend time. Dig yourself into the Word of God in this time. You've got time. Spend time in the Word of God. And I believe that God... He may have, you will have an encounter with God because God is able to do more. See you next time. I love you. Bye.